subject. Say, did you know that all problems in the world today come from human behavior? And that one of the biggest of these problems is square pegs in round holes? Unfortunately, human pegs come in the kookiest shapes. And some of them are pretty shapely, I'll tell you. <laughs> but whatever the shape, each must fit his right place in life. Like this. <laughs> and if he doesn't fit, <laughs> use a bigger hammer. Here in the vocational guidance lab, the professor turns failures into instant success with aptitude testing. Just look at all the case histories. Now, let's see. Einstein, Marconi, Thomas Edison, Donald Duck, Rockefeller, and the... Donald Duck? Ooh, that's right. <laughs> my most sensational case history. My own nephew. But it was only a few months ago. He was sitting right over there. And I said to him, stop drifting, settle down. Ooh, what am I saying? Stop being settled down and get out and do something. There must be something you can do. I'm going. You are going to take the famous Bond Drake ABC test series. First, we analyze your IQ. All right, stick out your eye and we look at your <laughs> No, that isn't what I meant. I mean, remove your hat. My hat! Now we connect the encephalophilogen. The encephal... We're gonna connect the hair dryer directly with your brain. <laughs> ooh, 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 good heavens, the brain of an Einstein! Ah, sorry, I better get out of here. Stop! Shame for you, running away with a brain like that? My boy, you owe it to all mankind to find out what you are a genius at. That's where test B comes in, my famous word association test. Now, here's how it works. I say man. And what do you say? Woman. That's logic. It's going to get you in a lot of trouble, but it's logic. All right, here is your first word. Quick, what comes into your mind? Huh? And to this step, and to this. What am I doing? I don't have to know how to say it. I'm the doctor. All right, I'm going to give you a little help. Hey, quick, what do you think of? <laughs> Excellent. That's good enough. We quit while we're ahead. Now we proceed with test C the amazing Professor Von Drake ink blot test. It reveals what is hidden in the subconscious mind and gives the final answer. The professor demonstrates. Ink, paper, now squirt, fold, unfold, and presto, we have a slipshot of what's on my mind. Woo! If that's what's on my mind, I'm in trouble. Let me do it. Ink, paper, squirt. Help! I can't see. Where's Tessie? I can't see Tessie. I Ooh, now I can see. How marvelous! My first ink blot test in living color. And all spelled out, go west, land of opportunity. Congratulations, young man. There, you see how easy it is to make nothing out of something? It means that you are going to be a genius raising bees out west. What a triumph for vocational guidance. <laughs> and we're gonna guide you right out of the door. Well, believe it or not, my nephew Donald made good. He started out with one hive, then another, until he was so full of hives, he didn't know where to scratch. But human behavior never sleeps. And the trouble started early one morning. It was a clear case of obsessional neurosis, like when a bear has honey on his brain. Now I want you to observe the dramatic conflict between human behavior, bear behavior, and government behavior. You can see when a bear has a monkey like this on his back, nothing but nothing can stop him. As always, we can observe here the constant battle between producer and consumer, one of the major problems of human behavior. Human
human behavior problem we are going to discuss is sleep. Say, did you know that half the people in the world suffers from insomnia, while the other half can't sleep? And that 17% has hangnails, which has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with this subject? <laughs> well, according to the greatest authority of all, Dr. Freud, and this is strictly off the cuff, Sleep is incorporated into the daily frustrations of the fear syndrome that is complicated in turn by the wish fulfillment in sleep that brings about the frame of reference that causes all of the sickness in human behavior. And he said that, and I'm glad that he said that, because I don't know what he was talking about. But to cure insomnia, we must first understand what sleep is. You know that the professor has published a whole encyclopedia on the subject, but science has developed a much quicker way to get an answer. The Chinese fortune cookie, from which I quote, That's a beautiful definition. All right, now we know what Confucius said. Let's see what modern man, or myself, has to say about it. Now my research on this strange behavior disturbance shows that man spends one-third of his time in bed. Ever since man felt the need to sleep, he's had trouble sleeping. In the Dark Ages, man tried to sleep on bare stone. Seeking better methods, he tried hay. Gesundheit. The next great advance was wood, but the termites kept him away. And finally, he tried metal. Out of which evolved the form-fitting mattress of today. I have discovered that there are many ways to induce sleep. Man can be walked to sleep, talked to sleep. You just won't believe what happened at the bridge club. I know what you'll think. Squawked to sleep. Rocked to sleep. And sucked to sleep. Contrary to popular belief, my research proves that people do not sleep like logs. They sleep like the frog. The dog. Like the ostrich. The mole. The bear. Like the owls. Today, more and more people find it increasingly difficult to obtain a good night's sleep. They are the victims of our mad pace of existence. While some perform their daily toil, these insomniacs sleep too hard at work. Hey! And work too hard at sleep. Go home and sleep on your own time. Asleep on his feet. Oh, boy. Hardly able to stay awake long enough to go to bed. Ooh, this man has a problem. For once, having made his bed, he can't sleep in it. <laughs> However, there are ways to approach the insomnia problem. Like adjusting the bedding. Or perhaps getting more fresh air, which is beneficial to health. A properly ventilated room is most conducive to breathing, allowing the lungs and other respiratory organs to perform to the maximum efficiency. However, if the temperature should fall below the prerequisites of bodily comfort, then an electric blanket makes one as warm as toast. Hot milk is very soothing. 
And of course, don't forget, counting sheep. It never fails. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stampede! Ah! Shh! 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 But the professor hasn't been asleep on the job, I assure you. <laughs> Today, my research associates are giving man a chance to sleep as he has never slept before. Using the yawn-inducing plaque as a starter, <laughs> the anti-snore chin stripe, ear stoppers, eye shade, and head warmer, and the anti-toss and turn suit, the sleeper is completely outfitted, gently tucked into bed, and softly rocked by the mattress pulsating machine. Dreamy music soothes each jangled nerve as a seismographic chart is giving science an insight onto the subject's reaction. This sensitive machine records electrical waves sent out by the brain. Every minute detail is transcribed as each tiny thought takes shape. <laughs> Thus, science proves that dreams affect the subconscious mind, just like Dr. Ford said. Our researcher approaches the problem with undiminished vigor, calling on every available resource, delving even into the occult. enlisting Mother Nature's help. We carefully consider every possibility because science can leave nothing to chance. Hmm. Only through constant effort and research can we come up with the final answer to man's insomnia problem. Sleep finally came to this poor, suffering insomnia. How lucky he called on us for help. So you see, science has found a way to cure insomnia. Now all he has to do is find a way to cure his headache. Hey, who's snoozing while the professor is giving a lecture down there? It's a... Ooh, <laughs> about that, that's my own foot went to sleep. Ooh, shame on you snoring while your daddy is talking. But what am I getting excited? It's not the first time that anyone snored during one of my lectures. As a matter of fact, I got probably one of the greatest collection of snores from an audience that anyone has ever seen. Became so popular, I had to put an album together called Snore Along with Ludwig. I would like you to hear one of the records for the album right now, would you? <laughs>
called the fad virus. Now let's take a little closer look at it here with the microphone. Did you ever look in a drop of water? Ooh, the terrible things in it. This particular variety has infected the population today with a strange mania. Aqua mania or water nuts. Take any town anywhere, because wherever you look, almost anybody is an aquamaniac. Now here is a documented case history of a typical aquamaniac. I call him Mr. X. This is his home, but it wasn't always like this. Oh no, not so long ago, it was a well-kept dwelling. Promptly at 7.30 every morning, Mr. X said goodbye to his family. Bye, bye. So long, Daddy. And left for work. On he walked, claiming the exercise kept him fit. But this was not altogether true. You see, secretly, Mr. X used to walk by a place that sold boats. At first, it seemed harmless enough. But the human body is about two-thirds water. And my research shows that it's water on the brain that drives a man to boating. Ah, yes. Just one for the road. <laughs> oh, how those words have altered men's lives. Mr. X had much to learn about the ocean. For example, the effect salt water has upon metal. An effect commonly called rust. Well, what have we learned about human behavior so far? Hmm? What? We have learned that man is full of neurosis, psychosis, obsessions, compulsions, frustrations, fads, foibles, phobias, and manias. Call this a behavior pattern? <laughs> It's more like a kooky, crazy quilt is what. But don't get the professor wrong. Human behavior can be wonderful. Oh, sometimes it makes me feel so lyrical, I could just sing about it. <laughs> just look at the world full of beauty and art. What man has created with hand and with heart. His glittering cities saw up to the skies. His homes and his gardens. A sight for sore eyes. His playgrounds and beaches, his freeways and parks, what wonders of beauty, what genius, what spark. Then why does he go and has to mess it all up? You ask me who's to blame? You want to know his name? He's the most obnoxious lug. I call him Litterbuck. <laughs> Litterbug, Litterbug, shame on you! Look at the terrible things you do! Littering, cluttering, every place! My, but it's disgraceful! Litterbug, Litterbug, where's your pride? Making a mess of the countryside! Spoiling and soiling each lovely view! Shame, oh shame on you! It really makes one wonder what kind of house you keep! On every tour, the world is your personal garbage heap. You thoughtless litterbug, litterbug, don't you care? People must follow you everywhere, cleaning up places that you've gone to. Litterbug, oh shame on you! You litterbug, you! Now let's be honest with one another. I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it. But somebody is doing it and the place is a real mess. The whole thing looks just terrible. And it is for them folks, which is none of us, that the professor has written this book. In the war that we wage against pests, modern science, of course, never rests. The mosquito, we are told, now is largely controlled through oil sprayed on swamps it infests. The boll weevil, relentlessly lusting, succumbs to a chemical dusting. And where the termite carouses, we fumigate houses with gases it finds most disgusting. Still, we have no cause to be smug. We've invented no poison nor drug to settle the score with one pest we abhor and contemptuously call litterbug. 
This strange wingless pest we berate was unwisely endowed with one trait. With claw-like transmitters, it holds, tears, and litters. On weekends, three times its own weight. Of their habits, this much science knows. They stay dormant through seasons of snows, behind walls that are thick, made of wood or of brick, in their nests built in parallel rows. They emerge in great numbers in spring, and at once start to scamper and sing. They take pride in their labors, competing with neighbors who engage in the very same thing. Although proudly each strives to maintain an immaculate private domain, why each one another throws trash on his brother is a paradox none can explain. Now, as to the types of litter bugs, most common, the unconscious carrier uses the drop or the pop and drop. It possesses no brain for a barrier. And when virus inflicted, its litter is carelessly tossed. And when tobacco addicted, its trail is not easily lost. The sports bug, flamboyant in raiment, uh, is always loaded for littering entertainment. Drop kicking. A well-placed bunt. Drives that are clicking. A javelin stunt. Out! A four-litter man. <laughs> now the sneak bug is a is a sneak. Methods polished to perfection. Some so smooth in technique, they defy human detection. It's impossible to follow the sleight of hand action unless we slow down that action a fraction. Harmless, lovable creatures till their inborn instincts appear and they show their obnoxious features. Though receiving no formal training, they achieve amazing results, constantly striving and straining to be as objectionable as the adults. Summertime is migration time, and litterbugs swarm in veritable legions. Thousands upon thousands, moving on to other regions. Ooh, a frightening experience to be caught in their path. This swarm consists of two species, so science teaches. One plagues mountains, the other beaches. The beach bug is attracted by the sparkling white sands and oceans glittering. And here it indulges in its favorite pastimes, eating and littering. Beach bugs is not nocturnal. At sundown, they instinctively return to their habitations. Archaeologists have unearthed these evidences of previous migrations. The mountain bug is drawn to woodland splendor, where nature's at her best. Here it establishes a temporary nest. In the crisp mountain air, its appetite is far from retarded. It eats anything from containers that can be easily discarded. Little bug, little bug, little bug. Little bug, shame on you. Look at 
like a terrible thing you do. Littering, cluttering every place. My, but it's disgraceful. Litterbug, litterbug, where's your pride? Making a mess of the country tide. Falling and soiling each lovely view. Shame, oh shame on you! It really makes one wonder what kind of house you keep. On every tour, the world is your personal garbage heap. You thought less litterbug, litterbug, don't you care? People must follow you everywhere, cleaning up places that you've gone to. Litterbug, shame on you! Clutter, clutter, clutter. Picnics, <laughs> tourists, <laughs> bah! Well, there you have the bare facts on human behavior. Don't forget what the professor has taught you. Well, I guess I won't need these notes any longer. Oops. <laughs> well, Auf Wiedersehen.